Welcome live here at Langley Speedway, live on Tickered Flag Interactive, Steve Bonesteel and Mr. Lucas Huffman up in the booth here tonight for more short track action here. Wednesday night, the Maritime iRacing League is coming to you here for the Atlantic Superstore 250, presented by Vector Gaming. Yeah, welcome to uh, Langley Speedway here. Um, going to do a quick running order through here, through the starting grid. Looks like uh, we have one to go. So it's going to be Mike Rhino and Brad Eddy on the front row. Heath Mack, Craig McDonald in the second row. Ricky Arbo, Ronald McKay in the top six. Todd Cousins, Stephen Matthews, seventh and eighth. David Cassidy and Chris Roma, the top ten. Kyle Gammon, Chris Garnett, eleventh and twelfth. Mackenzie Brewer, thirteenth and fourteenth. Carson Alb and Sean Gayton, fifteenth and sixteenth. Tim Terry and last week's winner, Jake Goodwin, rounding out the field. Looks like our pace car is rolling down into turn number three right now. These guys going to be getting ready for some tight racing here. This uh, track shaped kind of like an egg as they get off here. Green flag in the air. Looks like a good start for Mike Rhino. He's able to clear that number 72 machine of Eddie and Keith Mack trying to follow him through. Looks like he's going to get through. So the Revolution Motorsports 1-2 right here at the beginning. Single file all the way back to the seventh position. And it's Todd Cousins beside Stephen Matthews. They get single file now. Yeah, these guys all going to be fighting to get single file here. The only place to go is on the bottom side as the caution comes out. Looks like a little incident there in the back. Chris Roma getting turned around off the bumper. That number 78 of John Fitzpatrick. Uh, looked more like a racing deal than anything. 37 of Carson Alb having trouble to get that thing wowed down. Made big contact with Chris. Chris had to take a tow. Looks like that number 83 machine is done for the evening. So that is a bad break early in the going here at Langley Speedway. Yep, got the replay up on your screen. You see the 83 Chris Roma there going down into 1 and 2. That 78 kind of got down on that apron and uh, just couldn't keep it woed down enough to stay off the 83. He got turned around and then got slammed pretty hard there. Yeah, not a lot of, not a lot of luck for Chris. I think probably that's two or three weeks in a row now that he's uh, been out of this really early. And he's always had pretty decent cars, so... Pretty disappointing for him, but um, usually his brother has been carrying the flag for the Roma brothers, but uh, it looks like he didn't make it here in Langley this evening. So one thing I want to make note of is we have a, uh, I believe a part-time driver here in Brad Eddy. Haven't seen him on the series for about a month. Uh, had a really good qualifying effort, qualified outside to front row, was able to slot into third. He's going to be a driver to watch here tonight. Um, I don't really have a scouting report on him, so as the race progresses, we'll figure out uh, his driving style and whether or not he can save that equipment for the entire 250-lap event here. You know, just as you mentioned that, as they double up, uh, we've got him here. We've tuned into his channel. What are your thoughts going into this restart here? Just a brief thought. Oh, it's a little late, boys. I'm just going to try to stay to the inside, see if I can hold my position and wait for the end of the race. All right, good luck. We'll keep you non-distracted here. Good luck on this restart. Thanks, bud. Looks like that number 72 you just heard from, Brad Eddy was able to get a good restart there. He's side by side with Keith Mack for that second position. Is there two by two for second, third, fourth, and fifth? That's good news for Mike Rhino as he's able to build a little bit of separation here. Looks like Arbo has slotted into that fourth position. He's gonna try to get underneath that 22. Doesn't look like he's gonna be able to do it. So we're single file all the way back to about the 10th position. Big time mention for uh, the number 61, Ricky Arbo there. Uh, his team, York County Motorsports, a big time team there, Chris Stewart. Um, these guys come out here with some great setups each and every week, uh, presenting quite a few good groups out here. The number 61, Ricky, he gets everything uh, given to him. Very good partnership from uh, him and his sponsors out here. So every week, that number 61 machine looking strong, as well as a lot of the other cars out here. 
Yeah, definitely, uh, definitely been here every week, all season long, right there along with the Revolution Racing guys, uh, Rhino, Mac, and Ronald McKay. They've all three really been there every week as those three Revolution cars are three of your top five right now. The race seems to be settling in a little bit here. It's still early in the going, but um, like I said, your top five is going to be Mike, Rhino, Brad, Eddie, Keith, Mac, Ricky Arbo, and Ronald McKay. This event here at Langley Speedway, uh, the uh, Atlantic Superstore 250 presented by Vector Gaming is also one of the Triple Crown events, the last one here for the MIRL. So a lot of, a little bit of an extra prize on the line here, and a lot of guys try to do the best they can. On your screen currently, you got to look at the number 98 of Steven Matthews. He's sitting there in 8th position, a lot farther back than he usually is. Yeah, that... Uh he was our winner at Thompson, I believe, and, uh, you know, he, he kind of rode around that fifth position for the first half of the race, and then as it progressed, he was able to get through the field, and it looks like he just looked under and completed the pass on Todd Cousins, so that's going to slot him up to seventh, move Cousins back to eighth. But uh, as this race progresses, we'll watch that number 98 and see if he can find the bite he needs through these tight corners on this four-tenth of a mile Langley Speedway. Right now, Brad Eddy's moved up into that second place, but he's got a lot of competition from that number 22 of Keith Mack there in second place. So that Revolution Racing Machine is always strong week in, week out. That zigzag number 22 is always towards the front there, Lucas. And uh, very impressed, though, by the number 72, even though it's early on. To see him be able to make those passes move up through the top five, now in the top three, trying to chase down that leader, that's a good sign for him. Yeah, it looks like Brad was able to click off about a tenth there on Mike's lead. Mike has built up almost a second. And uh, I think this, this track, more than a lot of tracks that we've been to this season, a lot of it's about consistency. You can have a, a variation two to three tenths a lap with one bobble. So consistency is going to be the key here tonight as we've progressed into a nice little green flag run here. Still Mike Rhino out front, Brad Eddy in second, Keith Mack in third. One thing we do want to make note of is uh, your leader, Mike Rhino, was able to pull away a little bit th more there. Stayed about even with the 72, maybe got him a half a tenth that lap. It looks like he's going to be running into lap traffic here in the next two to three laps. The number 28 of Sean Gaten, a little off the pace early. And uh, we're going to see how Rhino is able to pick his way through this, through this traffic. Big time Jake Goodwin there in the 199 Nitro Circus machine. He is a way further back than he ever really is here in the MIRL. That number 199 is sitting in uh, 12th position outside the top 10. He's got a lot of uh, ground to make up here in 250 laps. He's definitely got to have a solid finish here at Langley. He's had a very solid season so far. He's been consistent race in, week out, race in and race out. However, unfortunately, he's very far back in the field right now. And like I said, it's a long race, so he's got plenty of time to make up those positions. But a lot of stuff can happen as you go up through the field. Yeah, I'm not quite sure what the issue is on that Goodwin machine this week. Uh, didn't actually post a qualifying time. He was about 14th out of the 19 cars or 18 cars in this event in practice. So I don't know if they just don't have a handle on that thing or what the issue is. But he has progressed up to 12th as the number 34, Mike Rhino, is making his way through traffic now. Doesn't seem to be holding him up very much. Had one of them just let go. Looks like Carson Alb had the motor just let go on that number 37 machine. He's hopefully going to be able to pull that into the apron and get a caution. There's a possibility. Yeah, the caution will come out for that dead number 37 machine. I believe the, uh, the reason that motor let go is he made heavy contact with the number 83 of Chris Roma in that first caution. So uh, it was just a matter of time before that engine let go and unfortunately it did here on lap number 25. We'll hop on board with the 37 here as it just got ready to blow there going into turn one. You could hear him really doing the best he could to baby that number 37 machine and uh, unfortunately it just was not enough. Very tough luck there. Yeah, just had a series of bad luck here to begin this race. He uh, rolled off in about the 15th position, got caught up in that early accident, and it was just downhill from there. 
Uh, looks like the number 28 of Sean Gayton is going to get your wave around this time by. That'll put him back on the lead lap. So we're going to have 16 cars. Every car that is still on the racetrack is on the lead lap. Definitely not what Mike Rhino wanted to see. He was clear by about a second and a half, working his way through traffic better than that number 72 of Brad Eddy. Uh, don't think we'll be seeing pit stops here this race. I mean, there's a possibility we may. Uh, Mike Rhino was our... He was our winner in our last Triple Crown event, so he's going to go for two out of three here. That would be a pretty big feat here in this series. You are tuned in to Checkered Flag Interactive. Steve Bonesteel and Lucas Huffman up in the booth here live from Langley Speedway for the Atlantic Superstore 250 presented by Vector Gaming as well as Tim's Corner Motorsports. Uh, big night here on Checkered Flag Interactive. After this, head over to our YouTube channel and tune in for some GT3 endurance racing at Silverstone. We've got 90 laps there, about 57 laps, I do believe. So that's going to be plenty of exciting racing there. So uh, make sure you tune in for that. That will go live at 9.45 on our YouTube channel. Make sure you get your road fix right after your short track oval fix here on Checkered Flag Interactive. Going to run through the top five really quick here. It's Mike, Rhino, Brad, Eddie, Keith, Mack, your top three. Ronald McKay and Ricky Arbo in that fifth position. Stephen Matthews has made his way up to sixth. Todd Cousins, seventh. Looks like David Cassidy fell back to eighth. Kyle Gammon, ninth. And Christopher Garnett rounding out your top ten. Cautions here are pretty quick. Lucas has the, uh, the pace car lights are already off. These guys are getting set and ready for another green flag. What is the key for the number 72 there on the outside line? Well, I think the biggest key that he can have is he's going to have to try to get down as quick as he can. I don't think he'll be able to hang tough on that outside, but if he can clear down early and get right behind that number 34, then he might have an opportunity to move in or get underneath him. Pace car. pace car down, green flag in the air. Mike Rhino off to a good start. Looks like that 72 is going to try to hang on that quarter panel. May cost him, though, is the 22 of Keith Mack looking to the bottom. He's able to get down, so we're single file your top four. Outside of the number 61 is that number 98 of Stephen Matthews. That's actually going to cost him. He may fall back to seventh as the 05 getting ahead there. Yeah, right there, the number 98, Stephen Matthews. Stuck up on the high side right now, the 51 underneath of him, Kyle Gammon there. Doing the best he can. Maybe make a position up, but that number 98 will slide back down onto the bottom line. Maintain that position, and he'll be set and ready here. Try to work on Todd Cousins in the 05 right in front of him. Yeah, it looks like Steven got a little aggressive there and tried to pick away at that fifth position and ended up falling back to seventh. Maybe a little, maybe something he can try early in the race, but later he's not going to want to try as we have a caution here on the speedway. Looks like the 55 of McKenzie Brewer making slight contact with that number 13 of David Cassidy sending that machine around. Looks like light damage on both cars. Shouldn't be a big issue. Uh, some being discussed right now among the drivers is Brad, Eddie, and Mike Rhino have made contact a few times prior to coming to the green, uh, giving slight damage on both cars. If you look on the left side of that number 72 machine of Eddie, He's got some slight fender damage, and on that number 34, the right front has damage as well. Trying to get as close as you can on these restarts, and it looks like they've made slight contact a few times. Yeah, definitely that 72 has quite a bit of right side damage. The 34 doesn't look nearly as bad. It's not going to slow that 72 machine down at all. However, that is definitely something you cannot really let yourself do here. Um, and any type of racing, any type of damage is really going to negatively impact your car some way or another. So right there, both those cars have a little bit of damage. Not going to slow them down, but it's going to be just enough to have a new discussion point here in the race. Yeah, not a lot of frustration out of either driver. I think it's more of a, uh, a net code issue is what's being discussed. But um, it doesn't really seem to hurt either one of them. Is there one, two in our field right now? One thing I want to make note of is Tim Terry in that number 75 away from the neon green picked up a purple machine this week. I want to, I want to say that's a really good looking car. Got Tim's Corner .ca on there. And it looks like he entered the pit lane that time by and uh, 
had some service done to that machine. He's back out on the racetrack in the 16th position, the final car on the lead lap. Another car coming in that time was the 98 of Stephen Matthews. He pitted in from 7th. I don't know if he just wanted some fresh tires, uh, possibly repair some damage on that machine, but he is back in the 15th position. should be getting set to double up here as the base car lights should be coming off as they cross the line. Going to be pretty much the same type of restart for those guys up the front. The number 72 on the high side of Mike Rhino there on the inside line. That number 34 machine, that Eco Boost um, Ford. Looked pretty strong in that beginning run, but that number 72, once he got around Keith Mack there in the number 22 zigzag machine, uh, he was really able to start pulling down onto that leader and maybe... Uh, get something going as that caution came out we're 40 laps into this race plenty of racing left but i've got a feeling that number 72 is going to be fighting pretty hard for the win yeah coming to the stripe here we're going to have 210 laps remaining as the ford mustang pace car is in big start there for brad eddie he gets a, looks like alongside that number 34 looks like the 22 of mac actually wants to follow him in we might have a three wide battle for the lead mac thinks better of us we side by side with that number 72 of brad eddie for second position looks like Ronald McKay is going to try to follow him through and make it a revolution racing one, two, three here. We'll hop up into the checkered flag interactive chopper. A little bit of contact there between the 0, 3, and the 22. The Ronald McKay yeah, well, almost gets up into the 72 on the oh, high side. The 51 and the 05 both in the wall. Heavy contact on the right side of both of those machines. Look like an incidental racing kind of deal. But that's going to move all the, those guys all the way back to the 11th and 13th position. So two of your top six have pretty significant damage on the right side. It looks like we're going to stay green here. Yeah, that 0-5 Todd Cousins, you look at the right side there, a lot of damage. Maybe a little bit of a toe um, impact to that 0-5. Got that wall really hard here. Once you get those tires exposed, you hit that wall just a little bit, those suspensions are going to get tweaked pretty bad. Yeah, I think I was just more of a victim of circumstance. I think those guys were just both in the wrong place at the wrong time. and. Uh, one of those accordion type deals where at the back is where it really begins to stack up and that's where the bad stuff happened there. Very exciting racetrack here at Langley. Uh, this is always a lot of fun. I know I come here and uh, it's really shaped kind of like it's a little bit of a larger version of Oxford, I'd like to say. Oxford is a lot of fun, but you drive this track a lot like Oxford. The only difference is this track's not quite as round as Oxford. You have a little bit of a straightaway here at this track, but as soon as you go down in the corners, you really want to drive it a lot like you would that track. Yeah, you just want to try to maintain as much speed as you can through the center. It's not necessarily about getting the best run off or the hardest entry. You just want to try to maintain your speed throughout the center in the corner, and that's why you see a lot of these cars running a lot of left front camber to try to help that car turn looking right now the battle for first has not quite shaped up after that restart mike rhino there the number 34 machine he's got over half of a second until that number 22 of keith mack teammates here revolution racing uh plenty of time for these guys to get things sorted out however we're coming to 50 laps uh into this race now yes there's going to be exactly 200 laps to go when we come to the stripe one thing i want to make note of is keith mack and Mike Rhino, the last two laps have essentially been identical. They've been in within two one thousandths of a second of each other. So uh, you can definitely tell these guys have the same setup in the car. And once again, we're, you know, within one one hundredth of a second of being identical that time by. So just over six tenths of a second lead for Rhino. Looks like the battle for third place is heating up as Ronald McKay has ran down Brad Eddy. It looks like Brad's going to have to, he has to slow down a little more in the center than these other cars. They're able to roll through that center better. So third place beginning to heat up as Ricky Arbo is trying to make it a three car battle. Top five on your screen, Mike Rhino still leading. Keith Mack is in second. Eddie there in third, Ronald McKay fourth, and a Ricky Arbo there in fifth place in that number 61 machine. Looking strong early on, just not quite fast on the shorter runs. Yeah, it looks like the number nine, Craig McDonald's, ran him down for that fifth position. 
Ricky's been a little loose on corner exit. I've seen him have to wheel that thing a few times the last few laps. Is that number nine really dove it in that time? He's going to be right on his bumper as they enter turn number three this time. We go on board with the number nine of Craig McDonald. You see there that back bumper, that York County Motorsports number 61. Right there off that front bumper, he's going to dive it down into one and two there. Really driving it in hard, hitting that apex, and then just diamonding the corner off there. Yeah, one thing I want to make note of is that number 199 of Jake Goodwin has made his way up to the seventh position, so he's starting to run more where we expect him to run. Last week's winner uh, progressed up, looks like 11 spots so far. He's in that seventh position. Although Stephen Matthews in that number 98 is also looking pretty strong, giving uh, the number 199 of uh, Jake Goodwin a pretty good battle there for that seventh position. Very strange to see both of these drivers towards the rear end of that uh, front of the pack. Yeah, they're running about halfway through the field. Mike Rhino out in front, however, starting to extend that lead a little bit more. Uh, now it's up to a second. Yeah, I think he was able to work his way through that lap traffic. Sean Gaten going a lap down once again. I think Mike was able to kind of catch him on corner entry, and I think that uh, Keith kind of ran into him on corner exit, so got the better end of that exchange, and he was able to pull it to just over nine-tenths of a second. Thank you all for tuning in live here to Checkered Flag Interactive. If you're uh, coming here for the GT3 broadcast later on tonight, that will be on our YouTube channel. Head over to the Twitch chat if you need the link for that. But you are watching the Maritime iRacing League here at Langley for the Atlantic Superstore 250 presented by Vector Game. Looks like our leader, Mike Rhino, is going to come by to complete lap number 62 this time by, starting lap 63. He's pulled that to just over a second lead. He's at 1.1 seconds, so he's beginning to drive away a little bit. I think as this uh, race has progressed, we found out that that number 34 is really the class of the field tonight. Uh, Keith Max been able to hang with him for about 15 to 20 laps, but now that number 22 machine getting a little loose on corner exit, and he loses another tenth that time by. Very impressed, though, that number 72, uh, Eddie, has started to uh, pull back away from that 0-3 behind him there, and he's starting to actually reel back in that second-place driver of Keith Max. So we'll watch this number 72 closely here as the run goes on. One thing that this guy uh, might have been doing here earlier in the run is uh, maybe just driving a little bit easier on those right front tires here. Those things are going to get extremely hot. You're putting a lot of weight onto them as they go through the corner. Yeah, like you said earlier, it's a lot like Oxford, so it's almost a continuous turn, so really no break for that right front tire. As the run progresses, it will build up, it'll get hot, and it'll pick up the grease, and it will lose the grip. So that's why you're able to see, I think Mike Rhino was really able to pull another few tenths there. It's almost a second and a half now, and uh, the number 72 of Brad Eddy is actually running down that number 22 machine. Jake Goodwin still with a little bit of competition from behind that number 98 of Stephen Matthews not giving up. Yeah, if, I, if I'm not incorrect here, I believe these two are teammates, and uh, you can tell that by where they're running on the track and lap times are almost identical. I think Stephen's actually a little better through the center. I've been watching these two battle lately, and it uh, looks like Stephen has to wait just that extra half a tenth, tenth of a second on Jake to pick up the throttle, and um, I think that's really costing him. So I think Jake Goodwin... Uh, probably has about a seventh to ninth place car and I think Steven probably has a top five car because he's he's pretty consistently on this 199 throughout the corner. Yeah that 199 however uh, almost getting uh, sent around from a slight tap from that 98 machine but we look right in front of them there Ricky Arbo and Craig McDonald that number nine machine in the right behind that 61 looking strong and it looks like Ricky's just able to maintain that bottom line just good enough to keep that number nine behind him we'll see how long that lasts because I don't believe uh, Craig's going to want to be behind the number 61 much longer here because uh, Craig comes into this race he's always got a strong car um, however the number 61 he really needs a good race here the past few weeks he's had a lot of tough luck in that number 61 last week he was the fastest car on the track before uh, having contact with the number 03 machine who is uh, currently uh, right in front of him. Yeah, it's just uh, kind of a botch pit call out of that number 61. It cost them the race last week at O'Reilly Raceway Park. 
And uh, he had another race one, actually, uh, Irwindale, he had that pretty much one, had a computer issue and was coming down to about uh, four to go and his screen froze as he was leading and was dominant in that race too. So he really wants to try to rebound and get a good top five finish here for the points. But uh, Craig McDonald really driving it in that time, getting a little loose, having to wheel it. And didn't lose a lot of time, but uh, definitely probably made those tires scream a little bit. We're now 76 laps into this race. These long laps are going to be taken by very fast here with this green flag run. Limited pit stalls here at Langley, a very small track. Uh, pit roads very limited. So uh, these guys had a little bit of a tournament style type of qualifying session. However, uh, the maximum amount of drivers I do believe is 25 here at Langley. And uh, we got pretty close to it. We had about 20 drivers. Uh, coming around for the qualifying but only 18 registered for this race so we've got a shorter field a smaller field than usual here in the MIRL but that might kind of uh, contribute to some better racing because uh, there's plenty of room for these cars to get around these guys sometimes get almost uh, 30 cars out on the tracks Lucas and uh, when you have 30 cars going around a small short track that's less than half a mile there is absolutely nowhere to go yeah that's where we've ran into some issues this season it's just not enough room for the cars I think uh this has made it a little better. That's why we've got one of these longer green flag runs of the season. Is uh, One thing I want to make note of, that number 28 of Sean Gaten was a little off the pace early. He's pulled that machine into the pit lane. He's actually exited the server, so I don't know if there's an issue there or just not the handle he was looking for this evening. But that's going to put us to 15 cars on the racetrack. Mackenzie Brewer, Tim Terry, and David Cassidy all one lap down. Looks like 0-5 Todd Cousins is next. Going to be falling into the clutches of Mike Rhino here pretty soon. Really a tough break for Todd since he had a really good run going in that contact made right after the restart. Uh, really seems to have upset that race car and he's off the pace unfortunately. We'll hop on board with the gyro cam in the number 34. You see there he's led 79 laps so far. Um, only not leading a couple under a caution period. And uh, he's been up. I mean he's never fallen out of uh, anywhere further back than second place of that number 34. Mike Rhino has been strong all day long here at the track and uh, currently he's continuing to stretch out that lead he's now got almost uh, two seconds back to Keith Mack and that number 22 but you see he's starting to come up on the 05 with Todd Cousins who did find that wall earlier on and he's just gonna let him by Yes, yeah, he go ahead and uh, put that number 05 of Todd Cousins the lap down. That's going to put 11 cars on the lead lap. The last one's going to be that 78 of John Fitzpatrick and then Kyle Gammon in the top 10. And the 51 machine will be next in line after that. Because we're going to roll around and complete lap 85 this time by. Just over 150 laps to go in this thing. 165 actually this time by. Still Mike Rhino, Keith Mack, and Brad Eddy, your top three. Ronald McKay, Ricky Arbo, fourth and fifth. Craig McDonald, Jake Goodwin, Stephen Matthews, Christopher Garnett, and Kyle Gamm in the top ten. John Fitzpatrick, Todd Cousins, David Cassidy in the 13th position. 14th, Tim Terry, and 15th. The final car on the racetrack is McKenzie Brewer. Thanks for tuning in live here to Checkered Flag Interactive. Steve Bowen, Steel, Lucas Huffman up in the booth. We are going to head off to a quick commercial break. Do not go away. More action here from Langley for the MIRL Racing League here. We'll be right back.
Welcome back live here on Checker Flag Interactive. You're watching the Atlantic Superstore 250 presented by Vector Gaming here with the Maritime iRacing League. Rolling around a complete lap number 94 this time by just over 155 to go. It's still Mike Rhino leading. Actually lost about a half a second of his lead there while we were at break. He got kind of stuck behind that number 78 of John Fitzpatrick. Ended up getting around him but did cost him a little bit of time. One other thing to make note of is Craig McDonald got a lot of loose out of turn number 4 made contact with the wall and fell from the 6th to 8th position. So as we catch up here with what's happened while you guys were away, it's still Rhino, Mac, and Eddie, your top three, McKay and Arbo, your top five. Jake Goodwin's just now cracked his way up into that top five. The number 61 of Ricky Arbo goes high there for the, not only the 199, but the 98 of Stephen Matthews there follows and follows him right through. So uh, earlier on, I had my doubts about why Jake Goodwin and uh, Stephen Matthews were so far back in the field. However, they're doing a solid job here early on, starting to make their way uh, up towards the front as we're about a third of the way through this event. Yeah, it looks like both those cars have really, really settled in here in this longer run. Uh, lap times comparative to, uh, you know, a Mike Rhino, your leader right now, is they're pretty much right on pace within a half of a tenth of him. So, like I was saying, I think, uh, and I honestly think that the Matthews machine is a little better than the Goodwin machine, so I think if you were to maybe get these guys to catch up and put, put Steven up there with Mike, he may be able to stay with him, but Mike's pulled back away to about two and a half seconds here. He's beginning to pull away again here. As we have 10 cars on the lead lap, that number 51 right in front of the 34 is in the 10th position. As we've just ran around and completed lap 100 that time by, so we're at 150 to go. Yeah, we've got plenty of racing left here. This is the finale event out of uh, the MIRL. Um, they have three Triple Crown events here in their uh, uh, Super Late Model League for this season. Uh, nine, uh, 16 races um, in this season with a three uh, race championship event and then these guys here in the third race of uh, 250 laps here some prizes up at stake a little bit of money so these guys trying to do the best they can to maybe show up and uh, really get up towards the front of the field to make something happen get the most points out of those three races however uh, right now I've got a feeling that Keith Mack and Mike Rhino I do remember uh, looking back they finished top five in both of the other triple crown events so they've done a very solid job here in these longer events yeah, definitely some endurance specialists over there at Revolution Racing. They've been able to find speed in qualifying as well as long race or long run. So uh, it looks like Keith Max has been able to chip away about uh, almost a half a second here. These last few laps, I don't know if the 34 is the handling starting to fall away a little bit on that. He uh, a little better that time by as a 15.624 to Max 15.804. So he was able to lengthen it out back a little bit there. But uh, definitely that Revolution Racing team has put together good setups for these guys all season long. Yeah, doing a very solid job. Now the number 34 is going to dive underneath the 51 machine. And uh, he's having a pretty tough race there. He's one lap down. He is in 10th position here. And uh, Mike Rhino is doing a solid job out in the front right now. He's got a little bit of a buffer zone behind him, so he doesn't have to worry quite, quite yet. However, uh, Keith Mack and Brad Eddy behind him are still running pretty competitive. Yeah, those two cars in second and third are beginning to run him down a little bit. Uh, as we said, we have nine cars on the lead lap. Christopher Garnett in that 0-2, he was part of that early <clears throat> early incident, I believe, and that's why he slipped back to ninth. But uh, Brad Eddy's actually closed in right on the bumper of that 22 of Keith back as we actually have a battle heating up here for second position as they roll around to complete 109 that time by. Uh, staying even with Rhino even as they're battling and they are still running down that number 34 machine. You see uh, Keith Mack there, that number 22, that back end actually started to slide out, maybe driving it in there really hard. They're going to go side by side. Not much of a battle from Keith Mack as expected and the number 72 machine is just going to fly on by. You mentioned earlier that uh, you don't think there's going to be pit stops. Well, Lucas, I think that you might be a little bit wrong here. These tires seem to be starting to give up, and I think probably within the next 70 laps, uh, we might start seeing some of these guys come down. I don't really think they'll need fuel 
and if they do, it's going to be pretty close on it if they do. But, I mean, we're coming to halfway here. These tires are starting to give up. If this long run continues, you might start to see some of these guys struggle with that right front tire. Yeah, it looks like these tires have fallen off quite a bit. Uh, not as much as I anticipated. I also didn't really anticipate a 100-lap green flag run, but certainly do enjoy it. Um, Brad Eddy able to knock away a tenth there, so he's up to second. Keith Mack back to third. Ronald McKay fourth. Jake Goodwin in that fifth position. Jake Goodwin's pretty much maintained the same distance between him and the leader, so I think those cars further back do have similar speed. It's just they're going to need a caution or some strategy to get them back up in this thing. Yeah, it's not going to be easy, and it's never easy once you find yourself uh, farther falling behind here. And uh, once you go one lap down, especially at these short tracks, Langley is probably top three shortest tracks here on the service. So uh, going a lap down here is pretty tough to make back up, simply because you find yourself not being able to make up the positions even as time goes on. Yeah, the further this race runs... Uh the harder it is to get those laps back and I don't really envision any green flag pit stops unless it's a fuel issue obviously but because uh, you're just going to lose so much time these these crews on these super late models aren't your typical NASCAR 13.4 second stops they're more in the 19 to 20 second bracket which is probably going to be two laps by the time you come down the pit lane enter and exit That 72 looks very strong, Lucas, through the center of the corner. What I'm watching right now, a lot of guys starting to kind of push on entry, and that's causing them to get a little bit loose after the apex. But that 72 machine just looks like he is able to pilot it right around that apex um, on corner entry and uh, get a very solid run off the corner. Yeah, the good thing that uh, about that setup really more than anything is he's, he's running very similar lap times to Mike in that 34 car, but uh, he actually clicks away almost six-tenths of a second that lap. I don't know if Mike made a mistake or something, but uh, he's not wearing out his tires. You watch these other guys as they go around the racetrack. They're really fighting the race car. It doesn't look like Brad is fighting the car at this point. And as we come up on halfway here in a few laps, I think Brad might be there by the time that happens. He clicks away another tenth that time by. Yeah, that number 72 machine, he's a part-time racer here in the Maritime Eye Racing League. And uh, he's doing a very solid job here tonight, 123 laps in. He's starting to make a way, make his way back up towards that lead spot. And I'd say probably within the next 10 to 15 laps, we're going to have ourselves a big-time battle for the lead here. Yeah, he's able to knock off another few tenths there. It looks like he's running consistent 15.6s, and you see that Rhino machine kind of hovering in the 7.8s and 9s. As he's going to get under Tim Terry here on exit, it's another bad place to run into him. And uh, that's probably going to help that 72 close the gap a little bit more that time by. As we roll around a complete lap 125 this time by, that's going to be the cross flags. Mike Rhino coming to him this time by, 125 down, 125 to go. Just a lot of racing action here at the track for these guys. A very long run, probably one of the longest uh, runs we've had all season long. Really starting to bring out the best long run drivers here as we've watched some of these guys like uh, Brad Eddy there in second place. He's done a solid job moving up through the field. Jake Goodwin is up in that top five now, and he's got himself a little bit of a battle there, starting to shape up behind him still. He's got Steven Matthews just a couple tenths off that back bumper. So a lot of these guys doing the best they can as they move up through the field. But we're going to keep our eyes peeled here at the lead where the number 72 machine is really starting to close in on our leader, Mike Rhino. Yeah, just so I can tell by the, how that number 34 is acting, I can tell Mike's driving it pretty hard at this juncture of the race. He's really letting it sail on the corner entry, uh, just kind of getting the car loose on entry to help it stay stay free through the center and uh, oh getting really sideways that time he makes a bobble that's going to give the 72 of Eddie a couple tenths right there it should be down to about three tenths this time by yeah just over three tenths and it looks like we're going to have a battle for the lead here as they come around to complete lap 131 this time by 
Yeah, one thing about these super late model cars, they have a lot of power. They're not like your, uh, your, your street stock where you put the pedal down and they don't take off right away. You put the pedal down in these suckers and not only do you feel it, but I mean it's putting down a lot of horsepower to those four tires on the car and uh, that front end goes up in the air. I mean you can see it there on the screen. I mean these things get tight. Um, only for a couple reasons, of course, tires get wore out, but these things are simply so powerful. Yeah, the good thing about these cars, they have a lot of tires, so you do have a lot of grip, and that's why you're getting a lot of speed around here. Just over 15 and a half seconds, 100 laps into a run that time by, as we went green on 32, completing 133 that time by. It's just under two tenths of a second. Brad Eddy is there, and we have a battle for the lead. It's official. This battle is brought to you by Vector Gaming. We're going to go on board with the number 72 machine here as Mike Rhino struggles on entry. Yeah, you can see that Rhino machine. He's really, if you can see right there, he kind of sails it in and comes into the corner on a little bit of a yaw. Helps free the car up through the center. He's definitely wheeling that thing, trying to get everything he can out of it. As they're getting ready to come up on the number 02 of Christopher Garnett to put him a lap down, he's definitely fighting for that lap. He's not too far off the pace, realistically, just over a tenth. I mean, he's 15 seconds back after a 100-lap run, so it's not like he's uh, really slow. It's just uh, he's definitely got to try to keep on that lead lap. As it looks like Rhino is going to get through that traffic a little better makes that 72 have to pinch it down on the bottom but it looks like Mike gets a little bit loose through the exit of the corner and that's gonna allow that 72 to stay right there even with him as we hop on the back bumper of the number 34 taking a look out the back there at Brad Eddy in the number 72 you see um, beating him on the center of the corner is really what the 72 is able to do there and uh, on entry as well where Mike's really driving it in there to get that car a little bit upset to get it to turn uh, that 72 just drives it in there stable as could be and that super late model machine I mean you can hear the tires grinding in the background just a little bit on the ground uh, I mean the number 72 just looks strong yeah, I was talking about it earlier in this run. You really want to try to maintain as much speed as you can. And you can tell Rhino hasn't been able to maintain the speed to the center. He's kind of having to dime in those corners. And that 72 just smooth and steady, not wearing out the tires, just rolling through the center, doing a really good job. And I think the longer that this run goes on, the worse Rhino car, Rhino's car is going to get because uh, he's definitely making those tires scream more than that 72. We hop on the right front there. I mean, you can just see um, while the 34 right now is doing a solid job maintaining, now that that buffer zone that he had for about the last 100 laps is gone, now that Brad Eddy and that number 72 is just a stone's throw away from that back bumper, we're going to have ourselves a battle that's going to shape up throughout the race. And a uh, very incredible racing right now. And Mike Rhino, you know that he's driving that number 34 Revolution racing machine as hard as he can because he wants to win. He wants to maintain. And uh, he definitely wants to get that Triple Crown Championship. Yeah, that'd definitely uh, be a feather in his cap to win two out of three of these things and take home the overall Triple Crown Championship. Definitely a big accomplishment here with the, the length and the competition in these races. It looks like he gets a little loose that time by. That's going to allow the number 72 to suck up right on his bumper. They're able to get past that number 13 of David Cassidy. No issue there. And next car in line, you can see up there's that number 61 of Ricky Arbo. Not something we're used to seeing is that 61 go a lap down. Ricky stays high. Let's both of them follow through to the corner. Good etiquette there. Good racecraft. He's able to slot right back in line into that lucky dog position. Next in line to go a lap down will be the number nine of Craig McDonald. He's running in the seventh position. Taking a look at the top five on your screen, Mike Rhino, and then uh, Brad Eddy there in the number two, followed by Keith Mack, Jake Goodwin, and Stephen Matthews. Yeah, we can make note of that as Jake and Steven have also gotten by that number 03 of Ronald McKay. They have lost about a second to where they were holding Pat earlier. They're almost seven and a half seconds back, and they were hovering around six seconds for about 80 laps. So I think those two cars have fallen off a little bit. But still, bumper to bumper, the number one uh, number one position of Mike Rhino, number two position of Brad Eddy. As they come around to complete lap 149 this time by. So it's going to be 100 to go with the stripe.
Oh, Mike Rhino got really loose there. Lucas coming off the corner of that Ford EcoBoost Super Late Model Machine. I mean, he was driving it like it was Eldor. And he does again. Yeah, he's definitely uh, definitely upsetting those tires, and I think Brad's got the right approach. He's not being he's not being impatient. He's just riding right there in line. He knows that the longer that he just sits on the bumper of that 34, the harder he's going to drive it as he gets loose again there. It's just a matter of time now. It says 72 as you're watching here. He definitely has more speed. It looks like he can pass him anytime he wants. He's just staying patient, letting that 34 really get to those tires. And then when he feels like he can't wait any longer, he will go. But they, these two are actually still pulling away from Keith Mack in third, so really no rush. Yeah, he's got plenty of time, like you mentioned there. Now that he's there, he just has to wait for Rhino to continue to push that 34 machine to the limit until he finds himself getting really loose or something like that, or simply just has to let that 72 machine by. However, what he needs to do is that he needs to maintain that position there in second place because he himself can't make a, an issue for himself there in second place. Rhino, what he's doing, he's getting so low on the course that's... I mean, it's helping him turn, but it's only going to continue to beat that car up. Yeah, he's definitely using that uh, change in banking to help de-wedge the car and get it to rotate a little better in the center. As they're coming up on that number 75 of Tim Terry right here to put him three laps down. Uh, one thing we we'll want to make note of, about 70 laps ago, Mackenzie Brewer did pull it in the pits. So we have 14 cars on the racetrack. Right now, a battle still shaping up between Jake Goodwin, Stephen Matthews, and Ronald McKay. Doing a very nice job, Stephen Matthews there, being patient with Jake Goodwin. I've got a feeling Stephen in that number 98 machine has been a little bit faster throughout this event. It's just Jake Goodwin's been leading the way throughout the pack. I mean, they've moved themselves all the way up from outside the top 10, I do believe, uh, Lucas. So those two drivers are doing a great job making a lot of headway here. They have not had a lot of help with cautions. Yeah, they really have uh, had to get all those spots the hard way. I think the good thing is is their their pace is pretty relative with our leaders. They're still right around that seven seconds. So over the last hundred laps or so, they've only lost about a second to the leaders. And a lot of that may be uh, lap cars conceding the leaders and not so much to the fifth, sixth, and seventh place. As it looks like Goodwin gets really loose that time, the 72 looking to the bottom. He's going to go for it. Nope, he checks up. Going to follow him through that time by. As we have just under 90 laps to go, that 72 really eating the 34 alive in the center of the corner now. Definitely just a great battle shaping up here for the lead. These guys uh, have been, I mean, this battle has been the culminating event of what we've watched over the past 60, 70 laps. I mean, these guys, uh, you saw the number 72 machine kind of fall off the pace here on the start. And uh, now that he's there, lose for Rhino. He's going to look to the bottom. They're side by side. Slight contact on corner entry. Rhino goes up the track. That's going to give the line to the 72 of Eddie. A new leader for the first time all race. It's not Mike Rhino. It's going to be that 72 of Brad Eddie leads him by to complete lap 164. This time by 86 to go. We'll pull up the replay there on your screen. Beautiful job by the number 72. Yeah, he was able to just kind of capitalize on Mike getting a little loose there in three and four was able to stick his nose in on the bottom and I uh, was able to clear him and now it looks like that 72 is already half second clear driving away battle still on your screen between the 199 the 98 and the 03 this is for the top off uh, I mean this is for positions four through six there these guys racing hard Todd Cousins there on the 05 uh, letting these guys go by as he uh, continues to go laps down here. Steven Matthews going to catch him in a little bit of a bad spot. Going to lose a little bit of headway on Jake Goodwin. Not really going to matter. Like I said, I think that number 98 machine is faster than Goodwin. He's just waiting for these laps to really uh, just click off the board here. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, he's just being patient. Kind of like Brad was. And whenever the mistake is made, he's going to try to jump on it. As we have little under, little under 75 laps to go, or a little over 75 laps to go, 
Uh, one thing I want to make note of is Brad Eddy is beginning to pull away. He pulled about a tenth the last two laps. It's going to be just over eight tenths probably this time by. A driver we have not mentioned for the past 50 laps or so is the number 22 of Keith Mack. Uh, that zigzag machine has just been a little bit off pace with uh, Mike Rhino and Brad Eddy there throughout the beginning of the run. However, that machine starting to come back to life a little bit, running on pace with those top two drivers. And we might start to see that zigzag racing revolution machine uh, get back up to his teammate Mike Rhino. Yeah, that's one thing I was just getting ready to make note of is with how hard Mike ran that car for the 50 or so laps he and Brad were battling. I think Keith was just kind of maintaining his equipment and those tires are beginning to fall off on that Rhino machine as he's falling back pretty rapidly now. He's over a second back from the leader and uh, Keith has pulled him in about a second. So I think we're going to have a battle for second here in the next 20 to 30 laps. It's been a very great race here at Langley. Uh, you never really know what you're going to get into. Uh, and the MIRL has really been full of surprises over the past couple of weeks. We've had some really amazing uh, races over the past few weeks. Uh, Lucas Oil Raceway, we had a great race last week. And, uh, I mean, the past four races, I'd like to say, ever since uh, Oxford Plains, we've had some amazing racing, lots of green flag, and whatever was not green flag, we had plenty of actual battles on the track. Yeah, really, really entertaining stuff here the last few weeks. I mean, Irwindale was an incredible finish. We had uh, <clears throat> a lot of good things happen at Thompson. That was a good battle. Stephen Matthews pretty much tried to give that one away. Couldn't quite do it. Um, you know, just really good battles up and down the lineup here lately. And another great race shaping up here is it looks like Mike Rhino has almost fallen two seconds back of the leader. And Keith Mack has been able to maintain about two and a half seconds. 78, John Fitzpatrick getting in the wall. That's going to cause the number 22 of Keith Mack to check up. No damage on that 22 as he continues on to chase his teammate in that number 34. You are watching the Atlantic Superstore 250 presented by Vector Gaming here on Checkered Flag Interactive. Steve Bonesteel and Lucas Huffman up in the booth. Uh, you're tuned in here. And then later on tonight at 9.45 p.m. Eastern Time, we head to Silverstone for the um, Champion Endurance uh, Series. And then after that... We have more racing this weekend, but here tonight we've got this race right here, GT3 event at Silverstone, but we're going to head off to a quick commercial break. Do not go away. Checkered Flag Interactive returns in just a moment. Welcome back here on Checkered Flag Interactive. We're live at Langley Speedway with the Atlantic Super Soar 250 presented by Vector Gaming here in the MIRL. As you can see on your screen, Keith Mack has went by that number 34 Rhino. Rhino, uh, like I was making note of earlier, really made his tires angry and that was allowing Keith to actually run him down. 
So move Keith back to second, Rhino to third, Matthews fourth, Goodwin in fifth. Been a very enjoyable race so far, like I mentioned here. Um, five late, late, uh, lead changes between three different drivers throughout this event. And uh, now that uh, Eddie's out in front in that number 72 machine, I've got a feeling unless we get a caution, he will not be looking back. Yeah, I don't think... Uh I don't really think that he's going to have any issues with this thing, but Keith Mack has actually been able to pretty much maintain pace with him. He was almost 2.7 seconds back. He's got it down to 2.4, pretty much even that time by. Uh, it may come into play here. I don't know if these guys were anticipating such long green flag runs. It may come into play here for pit stops, possibly for fuel splash and go, something like that. So that'll be interesting to see what happens here. Really got to hand it to the guys that came out here and uh, did a great job on their setups and have really toughed it out. Even though they've got some damage early on, we saw a couple um, of collisions uh, with the wall and with other drivers earlier on, like uh, Todd Cousins. Uh, very tough luck for him in that 05 machine, and he's still out here driving three laps down with a very damaged 05. Yeah, he's been able to do all right, though. I mean, he's running in that 12th position, I believe. Uh, the other car that was involved with him, I can't 100% recall. I believe it was a 78 of John Fitzpatrick. He's two laps down. So those two have been able to kind of tough it out. And there's, you know, just over 50 laps in this event remaining. And uh, they're both going to probably walk away with top 15 finishes here. Jake Goodwin did get passed finally by the number nine, 98 of uh, Stephen Matthews. Stephen Matthews is currently one of the fastest cars out on the track right now. However, he's 8.4 seconds away from the leader. So uh, if he really wants to make anything happen, he's definitely going to need caution. We still got over 50 laps, so there is definitely hope for a caution. I don't really want to say it like that because uh, we never really want to hope for one. But as a driver, you might start to want one towards the uh, tail end of this race, especially when you're a driver like Steven Matthews, Jake Goodwin, Ronald McKay. All of these guys very fast just uh, not being able to get themselves up towards the front due to whatever reason. And now as this run goes on, they've got the cars underneath of them. Now they're starting to see the speed, but they're simply so far back that they just can't get back up there. Yeah, it looks like uh, Keith Mack has dropped to just over four seconds back. So he, he had been maintaining, but he ran into a group of cars that were pretty much three, a three-car group that was battling for position. And uh, that cost him pretty dearly working his way through that just over four seconds ahead up to Eddie from him. One thing I can make note of is the uh, number nine, Craig McDonald going a lap down under that uh, commercial period. So that will put six cars on the lead lap. Zero three, Ronald McKay, the last car on the lead lap, just over 12 seconds behind your leader, Brad Eddie. Mike Rhino has fallen back to the third spot. You saw that about 20 laps ago. That Ford EcoBoost machine uh, really probably burnt off that right front tire. He was really smoking it in there. And uh, unfortunately, what that's done is that really has uh, forced uh, Mike Rhino to drive this car in a manner that's simply making it hard to be fast, and it's only going to be beating up the rest of the tires on that machine. So that number 34 machine having a very solid run, there's no doubt about that. He's got the most laps uh, uh, locked up here, but that number 34, he wants a little bit better than a third spot. Yeah, I think uh, the big battle here actually might be for that second and third position. Steven Matthews has been able to maintain about eight seconds behind your leader as everyone else has fell, fallen back. So it looks like Steven's actually only two seconds behind that third position, only about four seconds behind second. And he, uh, like you said, he's turning right there even with the leader. He's running 15 sixes and sevens. And uh, Mac and Rhino are in the nine and O bracket. Yeah, he's just got a lot of ground to make up, and he's got a lot of lap down cars in front of him, which is not going to be beneficial to him in any way, shape, or form. So as that number 98 machine just continues to log some laps here, try to make up a position or two. Mike Rhino, like you said, not that far ahead of him. However, you see a group of cars right there in front of him, the 0-2, almost uh, causing a problem, and that could have been pretty bad there. 
uh, Christopher Garnett there, the 0-2, had to check up big time. Yeah, Garnett checked up. He yields the position that time by, so that's going to allow him easily through there. Uh, like I said, it's down about 1.8 seconds ahead up to that Rhino machine as he's going to get under the 05 of Garnett, or 05 of uh, Cousins that time by. Going to be able to clear him, no issue. Looks like the Nina McDonald's going to get out of his way, so he's he may I think he may have a shot at third. I don't know if he'll have enough time for a second place finish, but uh, with the way Rhino's been slipping back and how that 98 was able to kind of almost conserve when he rode behind Jake for that long extended amount of time. It's just over a second and a half up to that third position for him. Top five again on your screen there. You've got Brad Eddy out in front currently, followed by Keith Mack and that number 22 machine. Mike Rhino third, Stephen Matthews fourth, and Jake Goodwin rounds out the top five after 210 laps of racing here at Live on Chicken Flag Interactive. You are watching the Atlantic Superstore 250 presented by Vector Gaming. Completing lap 210 that time by, so we have 40 to go, 39 at the stripe right here for Brad Eddy. Uh, just want to make note, Stephen Matthews has put it within a second of that number 34, Mike Rhino, stabilizing the gap between the 22, so I don't know if he'll be able to get to Keith. But we are definitely going to have a battle for third place here shaping up in the next few laps. Yeah, Mike Rhino is still really struggling. I've been watching him uh, just having a really hard time from apex off. And, uh, of course, we've seen him uh, having struggles on entry. But now it's gotten to the point where that car is just incredibly unstable on the exit of the corner. And uh, he's actually just really simply struggling to keep that thing underneath of him there. You see him sideways. Um, sideways again. And uh, now Stephen Matthews, it won't even be much of a battle there, Lucas. And uh, that 34 machine will let him by. Yeah, I think uh, Mike really, really burned up those tires, as I was pointing out when Brad was following him. He's just going to let him do that and let the tires do the business. So, actually, that's going to put Steven within three seconds of Keith Mack as Brad Eddy has pulled away to a six-second lead as we roll over just an hour into this event. Uh, there's even a possibility with the way Mike's been running, he could lose a lap here. He may not even maintain a top five, which would really be upsetting considering how well that car ran on the shorter run. Yeah, Lucas, the past couple times by, uh, that number 34 machine has ran anywhere from a 16.2 to a 16.9. This time by, that lap time will stabilize a little bit, getting back down into the 15.9s, but uh, that number 34 machine has just uh, had a hellacious time over the past 30, 40, 50 laps after losing that lead to Brad Eddy there. And uh, now Brad's got over six seconds uh, back to that second place driver. And uh, Stephen Matthews is actually uh, setting his sights towards Keith Mack there for that second spot. And I've got a feeling uh, we might see a battle shape up for second spot because Stephen Matthews has a little bit of time to make up that spot. Yeah, he's got just over 30 laps with 30 laps remaining. So that factors in about a tenth a lap. So if he can just try to stabilize in that 8, 15.7. So we have a caution. And that and changes everything. Change everything. <laughs> Jinx. Yes, sir. So this is going to be interesting. We're going to have 30 laps to go as they roll around this time by. So that's going to put us to green with around 25 to 26 laps remaining. Lucky dog going to be Craig McDonald. That's going to put him on the lead lap. So that'll put seven cars on that lead lap. That's probably what Rhino needed. I got to imagine the 34 comes in. 98 Stephen Matthews pitting in. So not, it looks like Eddie's going to stay out. Not sure how I feel about that. Call Brad, Eddie, uh, Keith Mack also still out there. A little shocked I didn't see a lot of these guys back in the 4th, 5th, 6th position come down there with 30 laps to go. Jake Goodwin did come down, so that 199 moved him up to 4th place on fresh tires. There he is now. Uh, again coming down pit road following um, I guess these guys will be coming down the second time around Yeah, it looks like Rhino Mac Eddie all of them came down. So I don't know if there's a possibility did did Stephen Matthews pit on a closed pit um, I don't know if he did or not, but if he didn't then that's gonna slot him to the lead and It looks like he's letting the 72 go on the back stretch, so I don't know exactly what happened it looks like these guys calamity corner 
so Brad Eddy is actually going to stay the leader. Barely, actually, barely got out before that 98 had rolled around him on the racetrack. Ronald McKay is going to go up to third. Craig McDonald to fourth. Mike Rhino fifth. Jake Goodwin sixth. Keith Mack probably took all four tires with how, uh, how those Revolution cars had fallen off a little bit. Now that we might have a moment here, we've got our in-race reporter, Brad Eddy's up in the booth. Hey, guys. Hey, well, Brad, uh, we've seen that car as the run progresses. You've been one of the elite cars. Uh, just want to say, do you feel like you're going to be strong enough on this short run? Oh, yeah. it's It was hard to focus there. We started talking about some stuff, uh, me and Craig. But, um, yeah, I think, I think I got the car. No worries. So we'll see how it goes. All right, buddy. Good luck. Looks like the pace car is in, and Brad gets a great start. He's going to be able to clear that number 98 of Matthews. Matthews right on his bumper with the big toss down into the corner. Looks like possible contact being made right there. He's looking to the bottom. He's not going to get there. 34, Mike Rhino on the outside of the 03 of Ronald McKay. He's going to be able to get through. 199, Goodwin's going to go around. No caution on the speedway. Everybody keeps it straight. Oh, that is a tough break for Jake Goodwin, just working his way towards the top five here with fresh tires, and now he's out of it, but we've got ourselves a battle for the lead right there, the 72 and the 98 machine, bumper to bumper right now, 24 laps to go. 34, Rhino is still fighting a loose condition, is that 98 is Steven Matthews is going to be right on his bumper as we come to 23 to go this time by, less than two tenths is going to separate your leaders. That 72 a little bit loose on the corner exit and a little loose on the entry. That's going to allow 98 to get right on his bumper. We'll hop on board the nose of the 98. And uh, you can just see right there, so close coming into the corner. He's really trying to everything, uh, do everything that he can. A little bit of contact there you see inside the number 72. Both guys able to keep their super late models pointed the correct way as we're going to come to 20 laps this time by just over two tenths of a second when they come to the stripe right here. Brad Eddy, Stephen Matthews, it's shaping up to be a good one here at Langley. Don't count Mike Rhino out in that revolution racing machine either. I mean, all three of these drivers up in the top three, if we get another caution, anyone's really still in this game. So uh, just very tight racing right now. Steven Matthews in that number 98. We saw him towards the back end of the field for the majority of the race. He's moved his way up in the top five. He did that by driving, and then uh, somehow, some way, he was able to get it down on pit road before everyone else without getting a black flag. Maybe all the other drivers just simply missed pit road entry, and uh, that number 98's got himself in second place, but he's got himself a battle from behind coming as well as a big problem in front of him. Yeah, it looks like Brad Eddy was able to Get a little bit clear there. The number 98 looking a little tighter and tighter through the center. 34, Mike Rhino able to suck right up on his bumper. One, two, three, or nose to tail. Just under half a second between all three of them. But that 72 of Eddie seems to be hitting his stride as he's beginning to pull away a little bit. Here with 16 to go at the stride. Lap car of Tim Terry going to be coming right here. Tim Terry's going to go high. That's going to give all those guys the bottom. Tim Terry's going to be able to slow it up. Everybody's going to be able to get through with no issues. 34, Rhino really digging hard on the bottom. He's right on the rear bumper of that 98 of Steven Matthews. Heading up into the checkered flag interactive blimp. Taking a look from above, Mike Rhino. A little bit of contact there with the 98. He's going to slip that front end underneath of him there. Going down the front straightaway. Big dive into turns one and two. 98 trying to make the crossover. Not going to happen. Hell no. So put that 34 Rhino into the second spot. He's going to have just over 12 laps. Looks like 13 to go at this at the stripe. This time he's got a little over, a little over seven tenths of a second. So he's going to have to click off about a half a tenth a lap here to run down that 72 of Eddie. But that Eddie machine seems to be really hitting its stride as these tires put some heat in them. 
Yeah, we're going to have to really watch closely Mike Rhino there in the number 34. He was strong at the beginning of the last run there. However, that last run, he started first and had to find his way to keep that first spot. This time by, he had to fight around people, really heat those tires up, and now he's not in a comfort zone. Not at all. He's got himself a pretty, a pretty nice gap there, almost a full second. He's actually running a little tiny bit faster, but a little tiny bit faster is not quite fast enough here at Langley. Yeah, I think he's definitely he really enjoys those tires. Those other ones would probably pretty well burn up. As he's been clicking off about a quarter tenth of a lap, but as we have ten to go, nine to go at the stripe this time by, it's probably not going to be enough. Um, he really is being able to drive it deep down into the corner. He's catching him a little more and more here as we watch, but I just don't know if he's going to have enough time. It's still just over seven tenths of a second. You see it there live on your screen, the battle for first. I mean, you don't even see Mike Rhino in the camera angle going down the pack straight away. He dives it into three and four, makes up a little bit of time, but not quite enough. He's got just over half of a second to close down that last time by. He really drove it around this place. He's got eight laps to make it up now. The gap just to a half of a second going down the back straight away. Mike Rhino is pushing very hard. Yeah, Mike's really wheeling the hell out of this thing right now. He's, uh really getting there. 05 Todd Cousins there on the apron. He's out of the way. It's under half of a second as we're going to come to six to go this time by. I don't know if Mike's going to be able to get there. It's definitely going to be close. Yeah, he's ju just cranking that thing. I mean, you see it there, that gap still at half a second as they go around uh, that front straightaway. Oh, a bobble. A slight bobble from the number 72. That gap's going to go down a little bit less and now that 34 EcoBoost machine, he is in the picture. Yeah, he gets a little loose on corner exit there, but he's still able to knock off at almost over a tenth there, a tenth and a quarter. It's just at four tenths. Coming up on the lap car, Tim Terry here. He's going to stay high. So we're at four tenths of a second. Looks like the 72 is actually going to run into him on exit, and so is the 34 Rhino. That's actually going to hurt Rhino more than it's going to hurt Terry. Terry puts it in the wall, trying to keep it out of the way. Still just over four tenths of a second as we come to three to go this time by. Oh boy, this right here is going to be a very tight battle. I mean, he needs about five more laps. If he pushes it really hard, he might be able to get there. You see that gap. Now three laps to go. Still at four tenths of a second. Mike Rhino really using the apron. It's not able to get the drive off he needs, but he's really able to close in as he's about two car lengths back as they come to two to go. This time by Rhino sailing it out just under four tenths that time by 3.371 seconds as we have a lap and a half to settle it it's brad eddie and mike rhino coming to the white flag this time by i don't think he's going to be able to do it lucas he's driving it so hard off into the corner here he's going to get very close just about one more car length to that number 72 the 72 runs a little bit of a conservative line going into three and four big dive by the number 34 not going to get to his rear bumper hand it off to brad eddie big win for the number 72 here in the MIRL. Yeah, your part-time driver, first time we've seen him in probably over a month, and he comes up and shows him how it's done. Mike put on a heck of a show. You really think if Mike didn't didn't lose those positions for wearing out those tires, he wouldn't have had to fight through as much to get there. I think Mike had the best car down the stretch, but Brad Eddy was able to be smooth all race long, and that's going to give him a win here. In the Atlantic Superstore 250, presented by Vector Gaming, here live on Checkered Flag Interactive. Very well done by that number 72. You really just got to tip your hat to him there. Just drove that number 72 machine uh, to victory lane here. And uh, we'll run through the rest of the running order. Brad Eddy's going to win this one tonight. Mike Rhino with a good effort second place. Stephen Matthews did a heck of a job wheeling through that field. He's going to finish third. Keith Mack finishing fourth, Ronald McKay finishing fifth. That puts all three of your Revolution racing cars in the top five. Craig McDonald got a lap back there with about 30 to go and was able to get a sixth place finish. Seventh place was going to be Jake Goodwin. He got a little unlucky there with some contact on that last restart. Christopher Garnett, eighth. Ricky Arbo with an uncharacter uncharacteristic ninth place finish there. And Kyle Gammon rounding out the top ten. John Fitzpatrick finishing the 11th position, Tim Terry finishing 12th, David Cassidy 13th, Todd Cousins 14th, Mackenzie Brewer multiple laps down off the track in 15th, Sean Gayton also had an issue finishing 16th, Carson Alm had a motor let go pretty early in the event, he's going to finish 17th in the hard luck, the hard luck award again this week is Chris Roman, that 83 machine. 
And now we've got our winner. We can uh, tune into his channel here real quick. I'll toss it off to you, Lucas. Hey, Brad, uh, you got a copy on us? Yeah, I got you, boys. Hey, Brad, I uh, just want to say congratulations. You uh, wheeled the hell out of that number 72 here tonight. Um, I just want to get a quick uh, recap on what, what you felt. I noticed you fell about three seconds behind on that long green flag run, but as the laps and the tire pressure built up, you were able to run back down that 34 at Rhino. Yeah, I set my pictures low. I was watching the guys in practice, and they seemed to be pretty under control. So um, it was a gamble on my part, but the biggest thing was just uh, saving the gear, honestly. Um, I'm not sure if brakes in the sim are really a big deal, but uh, I didn't use much brake here anyway. But um, just trying to save my stuff there, and then once I saw Keith starting to bobble a little bit, I knew it was kind of time to start advancing. Uh, I was talking to Craig on TeamSpeak. He was telling me what was going on at the back of the pack, so uh, it was a pretty good team effort, I'd say. Yeah, I think is that uh, I was making note of when you were following Rhino there for that big amount of the race, probably 150 laps into the event, you were just kind of letting him use his equipment up, and then when he made a big mistake, you were able to get by him and drive away. Uh, one thing I want to make note of is when that caution came out, what was going through your mind? Oh, man, that was, uh, I knew that I'd be able to make it on fuel, and uh, I knew that I'd, I had the best long run car there, maybe other than Steve, so I was trying to see if... Steve was catching me, looking at the numbers or whatever, talking to Craig and stuff, but uh, no, I panicked a little bit, uh, to be honest with you. I went in, um, lucked out and beaten Steve out. I beat Steve out by about a foot, so that was that was really lucky, but um, yeah, it was just, it was fun at the end, honestly. It's it's different from going into concert, going from conservation mode to um, to full throttle. It's 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 different when you're, uh, when you're like a 200 green flag lap run. Well, that number 72 machine was strong on both parts. We just want to congratulate you here, everybody at Checkered Flag Interactive, on winning this event. Uh, go ahead and let us know who you got to thank and who got you here tonight. Oh, thanks, guys. Um, I'd just like to thank Jen Racing. Um, my little cousin Craig, he started this team, so uh, I figured I'd go over and give him some support. And uh, he's a great guy, to, great guy to talk to, great guy to work with. And we got Kyle Gammon on board, too. So uh, fun overall. I um, just want to shout out to CBC and Revolution Racing. Those guys were quick all day long, and um, they've made the competition stiff. But uh, I'd like to thank Danish Collision Center. They've been with us for, uh, for years now, and Samuel Medals and uh, Dartmouth Medals and Bottles. Once again, congratulations, Brad, and thanks for stopping by. Thanks a lot, guys. Have a good night. And that was the voice of your winner here in the MIRL here tonight for the Atlantic Superstore 250 presented by Vector Gaming. Very awesome race. I don't usually use that word during a broadcast here, Lucas, but very great racing all the way around from the track. We didn't really expect to have... Uh, that tight of racing because this track uh, is one of those tracks that you run out of room so quickly here and uh, these guys so close in competition a lot of close times uh, these guys just fighting for the same real estate but they did a great job out here tonight some amazing short track racing and then here later on tonight uh, head over to the checkered flag interactive YouTube and we will have some GT3 racing that is at 9:45. so tune in on our YouTube and uh, don't miss out. And unless, uh, Lucas, you have any final notes here, it's time to head off for the night. Yeah, just wanted to make note, uh, really good racing here tonight. A lot of patience shown, a lot of good racecraft. We were able to, I believe, have around 180 lap green flag run. Uh, pretty much everybody in this server has got something to be proud of just in that in and of itself. I uh, just want to congratulate Brad Eddy and Mike Rhino for putting on a heck of a show for all the fans out there. All right, good stuff. We will see you next week. I do believe we head to Richmond.